I remember playing Devil May Cry 1 as if it was yesterday. I rented it as a kid and I played the first level and I got to these puppet enemies and I absolutely crapped myself. And playing it again, I can fully understand why I crapped myself. That was my first and only exposure to the Devil May Cry series until 15 years later when I played DMC5 and I fecking loved it. Everything about it, the fast paced action, the cheesy dialogue, it was just brilliant. And ever since then, I've wanted to go back to the series. Well, the Devil May Cry HD collection was nine year on PlayStation, so I decided feck it and I bought it and I am so glad that I did. Devil May Cry 1 and 2 have firmly placed themselves in my top 10 games of all time. So I'm here to tell you why you have to play these games. So naturally, let's start with the first game. The story here hooked me within seconds. And not because it's well written or intriguing, it's so cheesy. I mean, come on, Dante gets stabbed, then a motorbike is thrown at him, which he then proceeds to rip in half with his pistols. This is only the first cutscene, and I just loved it from minute one. Dante is the son of the Dark Knight called Sparta, and he has some powers and he has to go kill demons. I don't need much more of an explanation than that, so I was happy. Once you get into the game, however, I realized just why I shit myself as a five year old. These puppet enemies are seriously creepy, and the atmosphere in the opening level is really eerie. The game does a few things so well, and that's where I want to start. Every encounter with a new enemy is treated like a big spectacle. Typically, they get their own cutscene and then a dedicated arena to learn how to fight them, and it's brilliant. It's such a simple way to make every new enemy unique, and it blows me away how well it's done in a game that's 21 years old. And this only gets better as the game goes on. There are some seriously tough enemies to face, but the game gives you time to understand their attacks before making them overcomplicated and frustrating. Without these initial encounters, I could see DMC1 becoming a frustrating mess, but it just isn't the case. The best example of this is the scissor enemy, which are probably the toughest in the game. You're given a tiny arena to fight them, and it was a massive roadblock. I thought to myself just how difficult this enemy will be when they're in a group, but the EMC shows restraint, understands this, and never gives you the enemy again. This is something I don't think I've ever seen a game do before, and to be honest, fighting this enemy with other enemies around them would be an absolute pain in the arse, so the restraint is well noted. To put this all into context, there are 11 types of enemies, some with small variants, but because there is so much poured into them, they never get stale as they are so well fleshed out. There are only 5 bosses too, and each is fought multiple times, which I thought was cheap until I realised just what this game was trying to achieve. Everything in this game is designed with one thing in mind, and that is mastering the game's mechanics to achieve a high rank. The small enemy pool lets you master every single enemy in the game, and the multiple fights with each boss does the exact same. Everything, and I mean everything in this game, is in service of mastering its mechanics to reach the highest scores. The small enemy pool lets you master each enemy encounter, and the multiple boss fights do the exact same. After fighting Phantom, the big spider fecker the third time, I ripped through him. The initial fight with him was the first difficulty spike in the game, so it felt great to master fighting him in the end, and this holds true with the rest of the boss fights. The final Nello Angelo fight was tougher than most balls in Elden Ring, and I was forced to learn his patterns and understand what combos work against him. Beating him was such a rush, and I fecking love this game, you just have to go play it. Now this is all bolstered by the simple yet satisfying combat, which at first I didn't like. You have two attacks, range with the press of square and melee with the press of triangle, and that's it. However, the game used directional inputs and delays to create combos, so a typical spectacle fighter has at least a heavy and light attack which you could string combos with, but the MC paired it back with only one button. So you can mash triangle for a strong combo, but if you press triangle, wait, then mash it, you get a different combo. On top of this, the back triangle is an upward slash that launches enemies, and from there you can meet them in the air or juggle them with ebony and ivory. You can feel every single hit and these combos are so satisfying to pull off. In addition to all this, there's a simple upgrade system that only offers one or two extra attacks for each weapon, but again, it works in the game's favour. Never overcomplicating things, rather giving you a small tool base that you are forced to master. I haven't even mentioned the other weapons which all have their uses, but I typically stuck with the starter weapons. But again, these have the same inputs as the other weapons but the combos will come out different, with some weapons hitting harder and slower than others. The game is impeccably designed from a combat standpoint, and it's insane how a game that was initially Resident Evil 4 turned into an absolute masterpiece of a spectacle fighter. 
Now there are three massive elephants in the room. Yes, this game is from 2001, so there are certain design choices that will feel outdated. I'll start with a more minor of the three. There are some random underwater sections that for whatever reason are first person and control terribly. I'd say all in all, these last for about 20 minutes across the whole game, and I am absolutely baffled as why they were included. There are lives, yes, lives in a tough as ball spectacle fighter, and I don't like it whatsoever. It adds unnecessary tedium and or grinding, and the game will be so much better without them. On top of that, this is coming from its Resident Evil roots. It has fixed camera angles. Well, they're fixed, but are slightly dynamic. And at first, I thought this was gonna be a massive issue, but I only had a handful of deaths due to poor camera. The rest of the time, it works surprisingly well. Even though these elements feel outdated, I implore, everybody to at least give DMC one a go. It is one of my favorite games on the PS2 now and has snuck into my top 10. I went on a journey from being slightly frustrated to getting absolutely hooked on this game. Its design is simply masterful and that's how I'll end Devil May Cry 1, so now on to Devil May Cry 2. And speaking of masterful games, let's talk about the bastard child Devil May Cry 2. This game seriously, seriously sucks balls. I heard it was really bad, but I thought surely it can't be that. And well, it actually can. After playing one level, the level design is terrible, enemies literally stand and refuse to hit you, and the guns are OP. That's all I'll say on it. It's not worth playing. Devil May Cry 1 has a great feel to its gameplay that you will only get by playing it, and you'll realize just how wonky DMC 2 is if you go straight from 1 to 2. It's so unimportant that in the Devil May Cry 5 story recap, they literally gave it a few sentences and then moved on. But luckily, I saved the best for last, and now it's time to move on to an absolute masterpiece of a game, which is Devil May Cry 3. Like DMC 1, the opening cutscene is plain and simple gold. Dante turns on a jukebox, eats pizza, and kills some demons. It sums up just what makes the story of these games so entertaining. He then proceeds to pull off some cool moves with his jacket, Again, the plot isn't important to me. Some tower springs up from the ground and he goes to explore it. His brother Virgil is here and one of the main bosses and that's all I cared to know. I knew from minute one that Dante was back to his full glory and then I jumped into the first encounter and the game feels just as good as DMC want to play. I was pulling off combos, launching enemies, smashing them to the ground, riddling them with bullets and racking up my combo meter and I was instantly hooked on the game exactly like Devil May Cry 1. Just take everything I say about DMC 1 and apply it to DMC 3. They are both masterful games, but DMC 3 improves on DMC 1 in certain ways, so let's talk about it. The combat system is simple and satisfying, enemy encounters are treated like they are boss fights, and everything is designed around mastery. However, now Dante has a few more tricks up his sleeve. The upgrade system is deeper than DMC 1, but they never push it too far. The weapons have roughly the same amount of upgrades, but there are four different forms that Dante can take, each with its own mechanics. One lets you dodge, one improves your aerial ability, another improves your ranged attack, and the final one enables you to block and parry enemies. And they're all helpful in different scenarios, but I didn't realize how important they were until I fought Agni and Rudra. Two bosses in one, and they absolutely annihilated me until I learned their mechanics. I changed to the parry stance and learned their attacks until I could reliably parry them, letting me deal massive damage to them. Exactly like beating the first Phantom in DMC 1, the boss fight was a sticking point where I said, this game is fecking phenomenal and it never let up from there. Where DMC 3 improves on the first one is in its boss fights. You still have to master them, but there are more in DMC 3 and they're certainly more unique and interesting. And it all culminates in one chapter which is like a boss rush mode and it showed me just how far I had come in my skill and understanding of the game. And that's the point where I thought DMC 3 is the best in the trilogy. This is the part of reviewing multiple games in the one series in, in one video because a lot of what I said about Devil May Cry 1 applies to Devil May Cry 3. So it probably looks like I'm not giving DMC 3 as much time as I probably should. Again, I don't discuss story, so that's a big chunk that basically is just missing from the video where I could probably flesh out DMC3 with more stuff on the story but everything as I said in DMC1 applies to DMC3 but it's just the upgrade system and the boss fights that improve on the game and to be honest DMC3 I believe is a must play game there's no more lives which is great but it's a must play game for any spectacle fighter fan it is seriously seriously an amazing game I cannot understate that. It is phenomenal. I am so glad I finally played these games. 
there really isn't much more to say but usually this collection is on sale on switch and playstation and steam so just go buy it and play it you're doing yourself a favor skip dmc2 that game sucks dmc1 and 3 are absolutely amazing and that's where i'll leave this video this has been kind of a different style but i really appreciate everybody watching follow me on twitter subscribe to this channel join the discord i will be streaming so keep your eye out on that i stream every single tuesday night european time so i'll see you all on the next video goodbye